I am one of the over 60 women who went public with my story of sexual assault and rape, in my case, by Bill Cosby. When the first trial ended in a mistrial, the second trial, they were allowed to, the district attorney was allowed to present five witnesses that were deemed prior bad acts witnesses. And that simply means our stories were very, very close to the story being told by Andrea Constant. So we were there to essentially say, this has happened before. This isn't an isolated incident. I was one of the, I was the first one who was able to give my testimony in this second trial that found him guilty. What was it like to get testimony feet away from him? Quite honestly, I completely forgot he was even in the courtroom. I was so focused on being articulate and, and not coming across as scattered or so emotional I couldn't possibly be remembering things correctly. I really wanted to, to be very clear to the jury that what memory I do have is crystal clear. Probably will be until I die. It, didn't even occur to me until about 10 or 15 minutes into my testimony and the questioning, I thought, oh, I, I wonder if he's here in the courtroom. And so I kind of took a quick glance over to my left. The jury was on my right. So I hadn't had any reason to look that way. And I looked, and, oh, there he was. For me, I don't think it was as jarring as it may have been for anybody else because he's been on the television. I've seen him a bunch somebody who might be testifying against somebody just you know John Q public and they haven't seen them since the assault that that could be jarring for me it was okay he's here um, memory state but you said that your time with him was crystal clear and why I think anybody who has lived through something traumatic whether it be a sexual assault or a, a battle in war or, or any any traumatic thing it's frozen in time and many times you wish it wasn't frozen in time but there it is and it will stay in your memory and I think part of my message to people is even so it's not going to fade but you'll be okay you'll start to be okay with those memories even though they are still crystal clear. Um, to remind, this is not for part of the story, but mm -hmm. remind me of, of what you accuse him of. I was 24 years old. I was given the opportunity for acting coaching. I, it was sanctioned, it was set up through my agency here in Denver. My flight was paid for by my agent. My hotel room was paid for by my agent. And I was sent to Reno, Nevada. I was picked up by a car and then I was not driven to my hotel and when I questioned the driver he said oh there's been a change of plans um, you're going to be in a private residence that a friend of Mr. Cosby's has loaned him so that he doesn't have to deal with the paparazzi and at the time again this is America's dad so I thought well that makes sense and we got there and I I rang the doorbell, he answered the door, I guess I expected a butler or something, and he was very calm, he was very friendly, genuine, um, told the driver where to put my bags, which was the first time I un understood that I wasn't staying at the hotel that my agent had paid for. And again, I just thought, oh, okay, change plans. And it was before cell phones. and. I don't remember seeing a phone anywhere. So the idea that I was in trouble never occurred to me. When we started the acting coaching, he had me do a cold read. And basically, the scene was taking place in a bar. And my character was supposed to be completely drunk. So I gave it a read. And he wasn't very impressed. And he said, have you ever been drunk? And I really, no, I hadn't. I didn't drink. So I said, no, not really. He said, how can you expect to be realistic at all? If you drank, what would it be? And I said, I, mm, glass of white wine, maybe. I don't really like it, but that's what I would have. 
and, and suddenly this glass of white wine is in front of me, and he said, just use this as a prop, and, and then read it again and see if that will help you get into the character. And, and I, I wasn't a drinker. And I can honestly tell you, I remember one sip, one sip, that's it. And then I don't remember anything again until this very graphic, these several graphic snapshots in my head. And I was being orally raped. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm getting chills myself listening sorry. to you. No, don't, please do not apologize. Um, okay. So we've come to today. We've come a long way. You testify. And you get this verdict. And you get the sentencing. Your thoughts initially. The very first thought goes back to when I first went public three years ago. And the bashing that all of these women took. Myself included. And being called liars and gold diggers or fame hunters, and never thinking that he would ever see the inside of a courtroom because of who he was. And then that happened. And then there was a mistrial, which hadn't occurred to me, but frankly, of course there is, because he'll never be held accountable. And the DA decided to try it again. And I got to be part of it. I got to see the man in a courtroom. That to me was the ultimate. That was amazing. And then they came back with a guilty verdict. There's another thing I never thought I'd see. And I think trying to protect myself, I'm sure a lot of the accusers did this, I, I didn't want to hope there would be jail time because I didn't want to be disappointed again. So seeing him walk out in handcuffs and going straight to prison, I never thought this would happen ever. I am in awe. I am grateful. I am feeling David and Goliath, the little guy, won. I'm feeling like the American justice system can be trusted. It's, it's overwhelmingly positive, and it's tragic. He destroyed himself. And of course, he'll never admit to that, nor will any of his publicists. But he took a brilliant career, and a man who had such incredible insight into the humor in everyday life. And a man who could have been such a role model for so many. And he destroyed that legacy. That is tragic. One thing I fear as a man mm -hmm. is the impression that women have of all men now. Sure. Um, especially with someone like Mr. Cosby who was America's dad, and who had that insight. Right. What is your message to, to men right now? What do you want to tell them about what's happening in this country, and about how women are viewing men in relationships and otherwise? Oh man, how long do you have? <laughs> Not that much time. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, first of all, I want to address something that you've unknowingly raised. When we all went public, thanks to the internet, you could be found. People can Google you. I cannot tell you how many men have reached out to those of us who went public to tell us their stories of sexual assault. And there, the stigma is still there for men. I said, years, three years ago, when I first went public, I said, this is the tip of the iceberg. People have no idea how prevalent this crime is. And then this started gaining some momentum, and then Me Too movement hit. And some men felt like they could come forward with their stories with the hashtag Me Too. But by and large, men are still feeling like they do not yet have their voice. So I want to make it very clear, this is not just the women. 
This is across the board. And once again, our society, our world, has no idea how prevalent this crime is. And until everybody starts speaking up, no one's going to believe that. That's point one. Point two, the more men of integrity that we have, the more we are going to help other men and women understand that these people that are criminals are, this isn't about sex, this is about power and about control. And oftentimes, you will be able to see the people who perpetrate these kinds of crimes either have zero self-esteem and they're trying to somehow gain it, or they're so used to the power trip, they will never have enough. It's very rarely the average person, very rarely, I think. It's, it's an extreme. It's somebody who needs to feel the power and the control over another human being. The vast majority of men and women are good people. I really believe that. What's the solution then uh, for, for those who, who are accused and those who are asserting their dominance or maybe their insecurities and mm -hmm. playing that out? What do you see as a solution? The most obvious one and the message I'd love to get out, especially to high schools and colleges, but into the workplace as well. Anytime you start abusing substances, the opportunities for this crime go up exponentially. I enjoy a glass of wine, but I understand moderation. And I think if you look at how often these crimes are committed, when people are drunk or under the influence of some other drug, because alcohol is a drug, that right there could be a huge lesson we could learn. It, just get it back into moderation. You can enjoy a glass of wine. You can enjoy a cocktail. But the minute people start abusing it, that, that's when the behavior starts slipping. So I think that's lesson number one. Lesson number two, especially if you are on your own, whether you are a male or a female, if you are in a situation where substances are getting out of control, I would say leave. I don't know what would happen to concerts and sports and bars, clubs, and restaurants if everybody who felt like, oh, I'm no longer comfortable in this situation, if they all left, that might make an economic statement. That would be a second thing. The third thing is, obviously, if you can, there is power in numbers. Try not to be alone. Try to make sure you got <laughs> back from Finding Nemo. Do you have your exit buddy? Have your buddy with you. That That's never a bad idea. Um, let's talk current events. So, <laughs> okay. obviously we know what's happening with the Supreme Court nominee and, and some other cases out there right now. But one thing we hear continuously is, why did these women wait so long? Why did the women wait so long in your case? But my hope, first of all, is to, to get that to change slowly because these people are now going to be held accountable. The very first woman who spoke out about Bill Cosby and inappropriate conduct was 50 years ago. She wasn't believed. Five decades of accusers went forward. Now by the time you get to when I had, it, it was 30 years ago for me, I had heard some stories. I didn't believe them. I didn't believe them. Why are you going to come forward? Because nobody's going to believe you anyway. And that's what's playing out again. It, history is repeating itself. I would like to hope, the timing is amazing on this, isn't it? That maybe we can say, all right, yes, you are innocent until proven guilty in our country. But yes, we also need to pay attention to these stories. You can't just say, Oh yeah, she's out for the attention. That, I guarantee you, no one is going to make this up. 
No one is going to do that. It is not about politics. It is not about two-party system or a smear campaign. These are people who say, I do not want the highest court in the land to have somebody on it that doesn't respect women. That's what this is about. And do they want to have an, it, I, I do think it should be investigated. Absolutely. Because he's innocent until proven guilty. I hope that there will be others, I've understood there are, my guess is there are, who will have the courage to come forward. That's what it takes right now. It takes numbers right now. Speaking of numbers, what's your message to women? I asked you about your message to men. I should have asked you to join <laughs> first. Um, what is your message to women who, who may have experienced some sort of assault, um, who may be living in the shadows right now? Right. My message is the same to women and men living in the shadows. And that is that it is hard to come to grips with what has happened to you. It is difficult, there's no question. You will go through denial, that's classic. You will go through self-blame. Somehow I caused this to happen, I did something wrong, I led him or her on. These are classic. And maybe the first step could be go out and get some reading material on victim mentality and recognize you're not alone and that you are doing exactly what the human brain and body does to help you survive. Then, as soon as you possibly can, speak up. Find your voice. This is a crime of control and power. And the sooner you find your voice and you go report it to the police, the sooner the justice wheels can start turning. And then you begin feeling empowered. It is not just you against this person. You've got a police department who's looking into it. They're at least listening to you. And I'm not saying that all of them are gonna be found with, with proof. But the more we have cell phones, every human being has a phone, the chances of somebody having caught something on a, on a picture or a video, the chances are getting pretty good that you will have some evidence. Check with your friends. Talk about it. Get that, get that monkey off your back as soon as you can. And the sooner you can do that, the, the more you'll feel like you've taken charge of your life again. The empowerment flips everything. Um, I guess my kind of my last thought here is, what does it feel like to know that he's sleeping in jail tonight and will be for many, probably the rest of his life? I'm not sure I've, that has all transpired since I have been here. I'm not sure I've really internalized it yet. I, I did watch him get led out of the courtroom in handcuffs. And for just a brief moment, I, those snapshots of my assault came back. And for me personally, as opposed to this is an issue, this is a cause, then it became personal. And I was able to, to put it together with my snapshots and how I felt and now seeing this. I never, I never thought this day would get, come. And there's, maybe there's the final message. I never thought this day would come, but it did. And there's the message of hope for anybody who will speak their truth. Never thought it would happen, but it did. This is justice? This is justice. Yeah. Okay. And do you have anything for her? No? This is perfect, because the battery is just about to die. Good, see, I, <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? Do we hit everything that you want to discuss? I think so, I think yeah. I mean, I wanted to go into the next issue, Good. and you took it there. Thank Good. you. Wow. Awesome blossom.